we're going to talk about learning designs and the specific type of learning design that I would like you to work on and practice. So this is based on my own pedagogical content knowledge of how to teach others to integrate technology effectively in their teaching and learning. So uh, this is kind of a process you can use that helps you think through these things. So first of all is identifying learning objectives and outcomes. And I'm asking you to combine a content area standard with an ISTE standard, because I think that helps us combine TPAC and PICRAT really well. I also want you to focus on an assessment approach because I want to think about how we know whether students have learned something or accomplished something. And along with that is some type of rubric or other guide that lets us know how we're going to evaluate uh, whether a student has learned. We need to think about the tools and technologies that we're going to use as well as the activities. So when we do this, we're going to be using both the TPAC model as well as the PICRAP model to bring in that content area, teaching with technology in the content area, as well as that transformative and creative use of technology. So I have a few examples. I don't necessarily have the deepest pedagogical content knowledge in these areas, but I, I have a little bit. And so we're going to go with it. Um, we're going to start with looking at natural selection, maybe for middle school age students. The Living World Curriculum from New Zealand has this learning outcome that we're going to explore patterns in the inheritance of genetically controlled characteristics. I want to combine that with the ISTE standard that students communicate complex ideas clearly and effectively by creating or using a variety of digital objects such as visualizations, models, or simulations. I think these go together very well um, because the patterns and inheritance and natural selection can be a complex idea and uh, having students be able to explain that effectively using technology just it just fits together well it aligns well so then i thought what type of assessment might i have well i think i want to have students create some type of digital media that explains a case of natural selection I like to keep uh, the media students use open um, so they can choose different things, although there are some media forms that are better for some things than others. Um, I might encourage here a video because I think that would be most effective for the content. But if students wanted to do a poster or a comic strip or something, I probably would be open to that. I want to make sure that there's certain terms that they're going to be using in their explanation. And so those are the terms I'm looking for for them to use. If I was doing this fully, I would also create a rubric that would evaluate based on their creation, whether they've met these learning outcomes. So you can see here, I have content knowledge, which is patterns and evolution and natural selection, pedagogical content knowledge. Students have a hard time conceptualizing changes across a long period of time, many generations. So that's one of the challenges we have with natural selection is just understanding the scope of something across a long period of time with a lot of randomness and variations. And my TPAC says, hmm, I might use a simulation to help them understand that. And that simulation looks like this. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in practice. We have here a nice little rabbit and the rabbit is hopping around. We can give the rabbit a mate and they're both going to hop around here and I can move forward to different generations. You can see different generations here. Now let's say I'm going to add a dominant trait of dark fur. I'm going to kind of go through the generations here and we're going to randomly start getting some rabbits with dark fur. And let's say some wolves appear. Okay. So now there's going to be some wolves and we're going to see what the wolves do. Um, there they go. They're going to eat a bunch of rabbits. Oh, let's see what's left. Okay, we've got some brown and white. Let's go through another generation and see what happens. Okay, more white rabbits. Oh, so who's surviving here? The brown rabbits are surviving, right? But what if we change this? What if we went and made it snowy outside? Then what would happen? Then we've got more white rabbits that are remaining. So students can play with this and map it, they can look at, at the generations, they can look at proportions of different characteristics, they can take a, a bunny and they can see like how it was developed, um, when it had uh, different gene changes and such. And that can help them visualize and really understand across time what happens. So it, it visualizes it and helps them interact in a way that uh, goes beyond 
what we could normally do by just explaining something. Okay, so that is the technological pedagogical content knowledge I might use here. So let's take that um, and let's come up with some activity. So first of all, I think they need to research basic vocabulary. There's a lot of vocabulary words in that simulation, like along here, that are important words for them to understand. And I think the best way for them to actually research and look it up on the internet. So I might just briefly say, we're gonna do that first. Then they're gonna explore the simulation and they're probably gonna need to discuss it with others or with the class. And then they can use the simulation to create a model of natural selection. Okay, now you notice here, I don't have a lot of detail about every single piece. It's just a basic outline of what we might do. When teaching, I might find that we need to spend more time on the vocabulary or something like that. But right now we're just focusing on aligning our learning outcomes um, and our activities and technologies. And, and these are primarily focused on this living world um, outcome. For this ISTE outcome that we're going to communicate complex ideas clearly and effectively, I want them to describe the simulation through some type of digital media. And this description is also going to account as my assessment because in their description, I can see whether they understand these ideas as well as they can, whether they can communicate it through digital media. So those are the pieces. We have the tools and technologies to research terms. This FET simulation is what I just showed you, media creation tools. We have the activities, we have the assessment, and then one piece I don't have on here is a rubric that I would make sure I'd want to add a rubric that can help me determine whether students have met these learning outcomes. So you can see how we're bringing together the technological pedagogical content knowledge that students have a hard time understanding variance and replication and things like that uh, in, in natural selection. And we're bringing in some creative uses and some transformative uses of technology. All right. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the next example, and this is based on something a student in Curriculum 5018 did uh, one term. So um, this is a dual immersion language development, which again, I'm not an expert in, but I have a little bit of background. And I, I chose uh, learning languages level one, and this is what it looks like on the New Zealand site, that students can select and use language to communicate, um, produce and respond to questions and requests and show social awareness when interacting with others. That's the content stuff, disciplinary stuff I want them to learn. The ISTE stuff is I want them to publish or present content that customizes the message and medium for their intended audiences. So that means we're going to have to be paying attention to the audiences of whatever we produce so we can customize the message for them. So an assessment that might align these two ideas could be that a group produces a podcast of interviews in multiple languages. So they're practicing these interviewing in multiple languages, but they're also producing the podcast where they have to customize a message for an audience. I might add to that an individual assessment where I have a brief teacher interview and I see if they can engage well in question and answer skills um, because that might give me some additional information that the podcast would not necessarily give. So in this case, I might choose to do both. So what this might look like is I have some tools and technologies, iPads, editing software, activities. I might start by making sure that students understand or decide on the purpose and audience of a podcast because we're trying to customize the message. Um, they might work together to make questions. And then this is what I love, students interview school community helpers in pairs. So they each pair conducts one Spanish and one English interview. So they're gonna actually be interviewing people in the school in two languages. And then they edit the interviews and produce the podcasts. And then I have the assessment, and then I would also probably have two rubrics in this case so that I can determine whether students have met these learning outcomes. So we see that we're using the podcast um, as a way, this podcast and this interview type podcast for technological pedagogical content knowledge, because we know that students need to be able to produce and respond to questions and that doing that with different people, having social awareness with others um, is very important. And this podcast is a way to do that. It also really gets us this creative way of using technology and even transformative because we're now sharing beyond just our class. In fact, 
one thing really cool about this is there's this big circle here called context. And we haven't talked about that very much. But what's really cool is this brings in the contextual knowledge and understanding where we say, what do these students need? What does their community need? And how can the students have an impact in the community? So that's, that's a bonus here that we're also bringing in a lot about the context. All right, so ultimately what I want you to focus on is aligning these things, aligning the learning objectives, your assessment approach, the tools and technologies and activities including the rubric, all right? And I think going through this process of thinking through these ideas can help you be more effective with your technology use. Main takeaways, your learning design should include standards or outcomes, tools and technologies, activities, and assessment, including a rubric or other type of grading guide if needed. Thanks.